Angela Mojuba Koba Listo We're at Chowdhury Music Studio on the campus of Whittier College in Whittier, California, United States of America, working on the project Motumbo. And today we are here adding vocal tracks and different various flutes and sitar and water gourds. Well, I'm all friends with Danilo, uh, for I was uh, very enamored with his father, who played Cuban flute music, and we talked about how to bring Native American music and elements that I have studied for a long time into some of this sacred music that is part of the the Nigerian Santeria music, and it just kind of started to happen when we started putting it together. Well, the original music that was sung vocally with bata drums, I started to listen to the vocal aspects of the music, just like when I studied American Indian music, it's vocally sung and then you transpose it to these different flutes. <laughs> so I have a lot of different traditional cedar American Indian flutes. I even use some Chinese flutes and I started to rearrange vocal aspects on instruments that weren't like a regular flute, so I was limited what I could do. So it took me a long time to try to get my arms around the chants with a 2,000 year old desert rim flute that we don't know what it sounded like, but my friend made a replication of the original that was in a museum in Arizona. And to be able to craft a sound that to me it sounded like clouds. And I have over 35 recordings of flute music records, but nothing like having these rhythms and these this foundation to work from so this project is as far removed from anything i've probably ever done i feel like i'm very interested in legacy work and and, and keeping cultures alive and keeping music alive it just makes me feel good that i can be part of something that i respect and look up to to work with some of the top people in this music was challenging. You know, these guys make me a little nervous, to be honest with you, because of who they are. Especially... That guy knows over 6,000 songs. That's pretty special. They have a reputation to uphold. Gary's an interesting guy. I always talks about the spirituality of uh, of the sound of the music that my father recorded in. Um, during the times of us knowing each other, he became a Native American flute virtuoso. I had to study his expression, and he wanted to do something with Afro-Cuban music. And I thought it would be really, really interesting if we could sort of set Afro-Cuban music to Native American music. And, and because um, he's such a fabulous musician, improviser, he's different than, than, than what most Native American flute players do where they play songs. He can actually go beyond that um, musically and take us to a different place, on a different journey. What we're going to use is materials that are different than the sonic materials that people would normally anticipate. In Afro-Cuban music, we're going to use something different. We're going to use different instruments. Um, so it sort of evolved that way. In doing the recording, it was a process of not only a journey, but it was an, an exploration, it was a discovery of uh, all the things possible, right? With, with a Native American flute and with musicians who could create a rhythmic web without creating density and without having to have serious interlocking rhythms where they could actually create around it. And it was great because it gave me an opportunity to use um, all the flutes and all the whistles that I have. And they have uh, me doing flutes so on top. 
and uh, and on the last rendition uh, on the bottom, I got to play a bass flute and sort of complement already the the great sound of Gary and what was there, but also contribute you know to the to the now the, the the vocals that were that are now part of the the recording. Back then, the 2002 version, there was only like three songs that had um, voice, and now it's like the ten tracks all have voice. Lazaro and Elaine sang great on it. Why didn't we have them singing throughout the rest of the record? Yo siempre he sido muy partidario de lo que es la música indígena, india y de todas las culturas, y me interesó mucho, sobre todo por su música y el tipo de diferentes flautas que se utilizan de las distintas tribus existentes aquí en América. Y fue, un, fue una cosa impactante para mí. El, el lamento, la forma, la melodía de esas músicas que son muy similares a los cantos yoruba de nuestros ancestros en Cuba, de la descendencia africana. Porque los indígenas siempre cantaban a los elementos, que son el agua, la tierra, el fuego. Y la forma, la melodía de los lamentos es muy similar a las canciones yoruba de nuestra trascendencia africana. Y fue más es interesantísimo. Si hoy es la música, hoy es la flauta de las distintas tribus existentes en América, hay una, una transmisión espiritual muy importante en ese tipo de melodía. Diciéndole a Dios, pide paz por tus hijos, por tu familia, especialmente la parte de adelante, uno siempre pide la bendición de las personas que ya no están con nosotros en este mundo. Siempre, siempre, todas las plegarias de Yoruba, uno por su mamá, si uno la perdió, por su papá, los grandes ancestros, uno siempre está pidiéndole bendición para que lo protejan en este mundo, ya que ellos están en un mundo astral, el cual no vemos, pero si sí ellos no ven a nosotros. Que yo digo motumba, motumba quiere decir, deme la bendición, santiguo, me blese. O hoy uno tiene que estarle pidiendo a Dios y a todos los elementos bendición y paz especialmente como está el mundo ahora y ya mi fiel motumba 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 y ya mi fiel motumba motumba O chunga lode, orille yo, la de coyuya mi fiedeno a